In this video, we'll be talking about what to look out for when revising your condo or homeowners association bylaws, and we'll go over a seven step process which will make bylaw revisions cost effective, simple, and painless. You're watching the Condo Web Show, the place where industry experts share their tips, advice, and help answer your questions so you can run a more efficient condo and spend less time in those pesky board meetings. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to click the subscribe button. And if you're watching on our website, fill out the subscription form so you never miss the next interview. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments section below. And don't forget to check out the show notes, links, and bonuses in the description below this video. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Condo Web Show. On today's episode, we have Helena Smith, and we'll be talking about uh, condominium bylaw revisions. Helena, thank you for joining me today. I've known you for many years, and it's always a pleasure to work with you. And I'll talk about working with Helena a little bit further in the interview because we're ha I'm having a fantastic experience with her. But Helena, to, would you be able to introduce yourself to our audience, please? Sure. First of all, Rafael, thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, my name is Helena Smith. I am a retired condominium manager. And I was voluntold that when I retired that I could not take all of the knowledge that I had with me. I've been associated with CCI, the Canadian Condominium Institute, for about 20, since about 20 minutes after I got into the business. And I achieved my ACCI designation, which is Associate of the Canadian Condominium Institute. And then in 2013 was awarded the FCCI, which is the Fellow of the Canadian Condominium Institute which is a national designation for my contributions to the condominium industry. So when I retired, I thought, okay, fine, I'll do bylaw revisions and some general consulting. And that's what I've been doing ever since, and I love it. It's great. It's like being a grandparent. You <laughs> hand the baby back at the end of the day. <laughs> Well, but, but you don't because you're retired. Yes. Um, well, first of all, congratulations on the FCCI designation. It's thank the you. highest designation uh, in Canada. Yes. Um, so thank you for your contributions to the industry. Thank you. Uh, you're one of those individuals that actually want to make a change in the industry for the better. Thank you. You're not in it just for the money. So it's fantastic to have you on the show here. And you're retired. Yes. Okay, so not many people retire I'm and they retired continue. I'm retired as a condominium manager. Condominium yes. manager, right? Yes. Um, so you have a vast, vast knowledge about the condominium industry. Yes. And you're retired. And when people <coughs> retire, mostly they, you know, they pick their feet up and retire on a beach somewhere or somewhere whereabouts. But you're continuing in this industry. So why are you continuing doing what you do, Helena? I love bylaws. Um, I like working with bylaws. Uh, even though bylaws are the most important legal document of your corporation, well-written bylaws provide you with an effective means of governing, and they're the backbone of the corporation. And without good bylaws, and, and I, just, I just enjoy the whole, pro, I enjoy the process, and I enjoy the legality of bylaws, and I just like reading bylaws. You know what, I'm, I'm happy that somebody does enjoy bylaws. Because <laughs> <laughs> when I moved into our condo, and I, I got a booklet yay thick, that, mm -hmm. and when I went through the first time, I'm like, you know what, this is like looking at a law book. Yes, it is. Because bylaws are the most important, it's the most important document in the condominium, yeah. right? And it's something that has to be enforced. It's something that has to be followed. And some boards don't understand that. That's right. Right? And then they run into issues. Yeah, right? Definitely. And then they have old bylaws that, you know, they want to make a change, they want to enforce a bylaw or a rule, but they can because it stays different in their bylaws. So it's something that we're going to get into, into uh, on this interview of how to revise bylaws quickly and efficiently. Yes. Um, However, before we proceed into that, mm -hmm. as, as we mentioned, bylaws are the most important document. Right. And you go through bylaw revisions. Could you tell me about the, um, one of the toughest clients you had to, or the boards that you had to deal with thus far? I've never found boards to be a problem. It's always one member of a board. Now, most boards are working together harmoniously for the benefit of the corporation. But sometimes you get a board that has a disruptor, or worse yet, a bully. And I've had, I, I do a lot of teaching of courses for CCI, that's my volunteer side. And I will inevitably get asked the question, what do we do about a bully? 
on the board. And I look at them and I say, who is allowing them to be a board? Well, they, they just insist in doing everything their way. And I say to them, a, that board member has one vote. All the rest of the board members each have one vote. So you are enabling that person to be the disruptor or the bully or whatever. All you have to do is say no, and a bully will back right down because that's the way the interaction works. And they look at me like, oh, really? And I go, uh, yeah. So there's never a bad board. It's usually just a board member that likes to try to steer things in their direction. Right. They're not working necessarily for the benefit of the corporation. Right. And a kind of corporation is not a dictatorship. That's it's right. a democracy. It's a democracy, 100%, right? because majority rules. Right, yes. so majority rules, everybody has a vote, that's how you basically get rid of bullies. Well, not get rid of them because they'll be on the board. Yep. However, that's how you can guide um, the board and your decisions based on voting, which that's is a fantastic right. answer. Thank you for touching up on that because not many, um, I've dealt with many boards as well, and there's one individual, maybe two individuals out of six or seven, and they mm -hmm. basically run the corporation and yep. everybody steps down. However, you have the power. The power is in the numbers. So if somebody, right? And there's no such thing uh, as a board member saying, I did this and I did that. It's we did this and we did that. Exactly. Um, so if you have a bully on the board, it's because you are enabling that to happen. Exactly. Yeah. So put your foot down, vote, outvote, yep. keep on going. Yep. Um, so Helena, when should a board revise or think about revising their bylaws? I know there's a lot of stuff happening in, in Alberta with our legislation yep. and with our act, and mostly across Canada as well. Same thing in the U, uh, in the United States. Mm -hmm. A lot of states are looking at their legislations and regulations and acts. Mm -hmm. So tell us, when should the board really consider revising their bylaws? When you have a problem that your bylaws don't address, you should be revising your bylaws. Now, I have worked with recently with a board that uh, they are just waiting for the developer to be finished and they're revising their bylaws to get rid of all mention of the developer and to define issues that will affect their corporation. I've had some boards that wait, haven't done their bylaws for 40 years. So talk about old yeah. um, and not having issues. I always, when I get asked that question and, and uh, boards will ask me, well, when should we revise our bylaws? And I say, do your bylaws mention TV antennas? And they go, oh, yeah, they do. And I go, uh, you should have done it about 25 years ago. Because how many TV antennas, even satellite dishes, are going the way of the, the dodo bird? Right. Um, with online streaming and all the rest of it. So uh, you should be revising your bylaws, especially at the fact that there's a new condominium property act. They're just finishing off the regulations now. You should be revising your bylaws. Because there are a lot of... Um, pieces of legislation that are not in the Condominium Property Act that do not affect just condominiums that are, are relevant to condominiums. Cannabis legislation, Airbnb, um, uh, oh, I can't think of the other. Oh, electric cars. Electric cars. Insurance. Uh, well, yeah, that affects condominiums right. though. But there's a lot of things that, that are outside the realm of the Condominium Property Act that affect condominiums. Age restrictions. So you need to be, you need to be incorporating all of that into your bylaws. Mm -hmm. And you 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 touch you touched on quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of items that are actually coming into the industry these days. Mm -hmm. And many times boards, you know, they don't like that somebody does something. They don't like that. For example, um, well, what we're struggling with uh, in the industry mostly is water damages, right? Yes. Or water leaks in in the condominiums. And the boards want to charge back the deductible. However, mm -hmm. if it doesn't sit in the bios that they can, they can. Their hands are tied, right? So yeah. then it's the corporation that pays for it. In the in the end, all the owners are pay for it through yes. condo fees or various right. contributions. Um, so sometimes boards don't know how to revise the bylaws. So tell me, Helena, why should the board come to you, for example, and with ask and ask for help in revising their bylaws? What are the benefits to that instead of them doing it by themselves? I can bring a time-effective and cost-effective uh, way of doing your bylaws. Now, I've, I've, in all the courses I teach and all the boards that I've worked with, I've come across uh, one gentleman that at one of the sessions that I was teaching said, well, um, and it was, we were touching on bylaws, and he said, well, he said, our, our um, 
board has been trying to revise our bylaws for the last three years. And we've spent about $30,000 so far. Wow. There was this huge gasp in the room. <laughs> and one lady said, $30,000. And I said, yeah, you kind of spent a little bit too much money mm -hmm. by about three times too much wow. money. And I can, your bylaw revision process shouldn't take longer than a year because things change. Your corporation changes, uh, legislation changes. So you want to get something that's effective right now. And so I can bring the time, time part and the cost part. The longer you go, Every time you talk to your lawyer, it's ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. Yeah. And I work with just one lawyer, Hugh Willis, who has been instrumental in um, working with the government to draft the new legislation. And he writes very plain language bylaws. And I really like his bylaws. He's very down to earth. So I bring that part of it as well, because that's who I'm mm -hmm. working with. And not only that, you bring a lot of industry experience, so you can yes. advise the boards of... I've seen a lot. Right. You know? You've seen a lot. The only thing I've never had to deal with is finding the dead body. <laughs> I have had, in one of the complexes I managed, it was a very, very large complex, and there was a um, building manager that lived on site, and twice she found a dead body. Once it was in the lobby, it was right on camera, it was a drug overdose, fine. Another was a man that I was dealing with, um, and she phoned me one day and she said uh, we hadn't heard from him and we went into his suite and he was dead. Hmm. I've never had to personally find the dead body. I've dealt with the dead body, but mm -hmm. I've never had to find it. No. So, I mean, just about anything else, yeah. you know. Wow. So, I've, I've, seen, I've seen a lot and done a mm -hmm. lot. Yeah. So, you can help the board tremendously in guiding them in the right direction, right? That so tell me, Helena, what else should boards be careful about when revising bylaws? What should they be lo looking at or into? They, they, they need to know what they're choosing because some sections have choices. Uh, they need to know what to choose, why to choose it, and how to explain it to their owners. You need to make sure that you're incorporating the new things in the Act. And there's a lot of things that are just governance um, that really don't have a lot of bearing on anything, but it's there and you have to follow the, all of those rules. Um, they need to pay attention, so they need to pay attention to the Act. They need to pay attention to the other pieces of legislation that mm -hmm. are going to affect condominium, age, uh, Airbnb, and those kinds of short-term rentals, um, electric cars, uh, cannabis. I mean, the list goes on. So you need to be aware of all of that, and a lot of boards aren't. Yeah. And also, be aware of what's going on inside of your condominium, well, right? That's, and that, then that, that's where it starts. Yeah, that's where it starts because they've got a problem that cannot is not addressed mm -hmm. in the bylaws. Yeah, and the we, resolution of that problem is not addressed. In the exactly right. And actually, that's one of the reasons uh, at our condominium we're revising our bylaws. And I'm happy to say that we're working with Helena right now, and the process is seamless. It, it's quick to the point. Um, you basically hold our meetings with our board or with our um, bylaw committee, and we just life through things. Um, if we have questions, you give us guidance, you give us yeah. answers. So the process is simple, quick, and painless. And I think we're going to be able to approve our bylaws within... Well, I'm just waiting for you to give me the, the date for the information session. Exactly. So we're just yeah. waiting on the information session. And um, after that... You and know, then it goes to a vote for, for the owners and uh, get the bylaws approved. And, and that is what is a little bit of work. Yeah. Because uh, there's a lot of people that just don't send their ballots in, so you have to hunt yeah. them. Yeah. But you know, it's, yeah. uh, gets done. That's the get, gets done. And Helen, I'm like, I'm, like, I'm. I think as a board, I think that's one of the best decisions we ever made. It's actually hiring you, oh, um, you. to help us with this task because it's, it's huge. It is. Like it I, is big when I looked at our bylaws, and I'm like, there's no way we can revise these ourselves um, because for one, we don't know what exactly what's happening uh, with the act, with the changes, with the legislation. So I'm like, we need to bring a professional that can consult us and advise us. And you have a fantastic seven step process yes. that we'll get into uh, in a little bit more detail because if the if boards follow this process, again, it'll be seamless and painless yes. and huge time savings and cost savings uh, for the corporation. Uh, but he, before that, uh, we're going to grab a quick uh, little, uh, little break, okay. grab a drink of water because there's right. going to be a lot of talking about the seven okay. steps that you have uh, 
used for years, which sure. are very effective and I love. And oh, I'm a process guy. Like if there's a process, I follow it. <laughs> it usually works. Usually works, yeah. right? Like majority of the time it works. Yeah. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching us. We'll be right back after the break and we'll be discussing or talking about your seven step process in revising okay. bylaws. Great. So stay tuned. Thank you for watching this episode of the Condo Web Show. Our goal is to share this information with as many condo boards, owners, and managers as possible. We would be forever grateful if you could share this episode with your friends and colleagues by simply clicking one or all of the social share buttons on this episode page. Even better, if you know someone that would benefit from this information, please send them a link to this episode. If you have any questions or any ideas for an episode, please submit it by clicking on the Submit an Episode link on the main menu. We will do our best to get an industry professional on the show to answer your questions. And lastly, don't forget to subscribe to the show on our website by submitting your name and email, or if you're watching on YouTube, by clicking the subscribe button. This way, you'll be reminded of upcoming episodes, and if you miss an episode, we will be happy to send you the recordings. Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us. And right now we're going to get into Helena's secret seven step <laughs> process. <laughs> not too secret. It's going out over it's here. It's not going to be secret. So this is priceless. Um, if you don't have a notepad and a pen, uh, or a piece of paper and a pen, grab one and start jotting this information down because it will help you tremendously. Now, at least it has helped our boards and I know it helps. We've helped many boards. Many right many now, boards. I think you're working with 12 boards. Well, I'm know. working with 12 right now and there's four more coming on. On, on board, yeah, and uh, I've worked with many, many boards in the past. Mm -hmm. when I was working with one. So you're not truly retired. <laughs> mm, yeah. Well, yeah, I, because I don't have to get up in the morning. To, yeah. oh. You know, so that's actually uh, that's actually a good analogy. Nice. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Every once in a while, you know, Every I have once a nine o'clock meeting. But, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So let's get into your into your into your you seven bet. steps. And the first step is get a draft from a condo lawyer. It has to be. It must be. In neon lights, a condominium lawyer. Um, if you are having a heart attack, you do not call a gynecologist. <laughs> so if you, it's like any other, any other profession, lawyers specialize. Some are real estate, some are, are criminal lawyers, some are family lawyers, whatever. Some are general lawyers, uh, wills and estates, tax lawyers. Condominium lawyers are just as important. And if you are dealing with the Condominium Property Act, you must use a condominium lawyer. Don't use your friend's cousin that's a real estate lawyer because you are not going to get a draft set of bylaws that you can recommend. Mm -hmm. And we've heard horror stories about oh. people going to a family lawyer. Um, certain boards have lawyers on the board that advise the board what steps to mm -hmm. take, even though they have no experience, they have no idea about the condo industry. Uh, but other than just, that they live in a condominium. Other than that, and other than the lawyer, right? But sometimes, you know, egos get inflated and they want to be the person that going, is going to guide and consult yep. the board. Okay, so that's step number one. You, Talk. Have, you have to use a condominium lawyer. And as I said, I work with Hugh Willis. So he provides the original draft. We have a questionnaire that we ask our boards, um, our bylaw committee people. Um, and this just gives you an, an opportunity to get the first draft with a lot of little things in it. Um, do, you want, are, do you want pets, yes or no? And if it's yes, what pets do you want? And then we always discuss it. So you, that first draft is very important. Mm -hmm. And when we, were, when we hired you for, uh, to help us revise the bylaws, we had a, an hour-long call. And yeah. you basically asked me com you know, important questions, questions yeah. lots of questions. That helped you pass on the information to uh, to, to, Hugh. The, to Hugh to the lawyer, and then they they uh, well he drafted a draft, yeah. and then we basically set up a bylaw committee. So that's yes. step two. That's step so basically, two. meet with the bylaw committee. Could you go a little bit into that? Right. Um, usually, the bylaw committee is comprised of board members. Now, not uh, not every board member has the time or the inclination to work on draft bylaws. So sometimes they will uh, invite. A member of the community in to sit on the bylaw committee. I always tell them, do not throw this open and say, does anybody want to be on the bylaw committee? Because you will always get the one person that is obstructionist, that is argumentative, that uh, just likes to make trouble. So the bylaw committee is generally board members. Perfect. 
And I think, from what I remember, our first meeting wasn't very long. We basically started a little bit early, had lunch, and we finished off. No, with the, the first read-through, when you get your first draft, uh, what we do is we read through the bylaws, the, we read through the draft, word for word, line by line, and we do it as a group. Now, I had a long argument one time with a board president. We were going to do their bylaws. And he wanted to break the bylaws up. You know, one person would do the first 10 sections and another person would do And I said, no, that is not the way to do it. So finally, I, I pushed enough that he went along with uh, my recommendation. And after that first meeting, he said, oh, that was, we really should. And the reason is, something that might jump right off the page and smack you in the, in the mouth goes right over else, somebody else's head. Mm -hmm. it, doesn't, it doesn't resonate with them at all. So you need to hear the words out loud. And that first read-through takes all day. Yeah. So you pick, in most cases, a Saturday or a Sunday when people are working. And I'm just doing one now. It's going to be through the week. Yes. <laughs> uh, because we're all retired. Um, but you, you take a day when uh, you can sit down. And you sit down around uh, a table, um, a board table or a dining room table not sitting around in the living room because you've all got paper in front of you and you can't balance this all on your lap. And uh, you start the process. You start reading it through. You break for lunch and the corporation buys lunch. Mm -hmm. And then you continue. And I, I mean, I had one session that went till 5.30 in the afternoon. That was long. That was much longer than usual. But whatever it takes. And uh, one time I had the session, the, the first read through broken into two, two sessions. Uh, fine. Uh, you don't do it at a board meeting, and you don't, preferably don't do it in the evening because everyone's tired, and you need to listen to what you're mm -hmm. what you're reading yeah. and what you're hearing. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, so that's actually long. Okay, I thought we spent like six or seven hours. I thought it was sh short and quick because, like, after looking at the bylaws, I'm like, this is going to take us for days, <laughs> no. right? So, I'm like, for me, I was like, wow, that was so painless and <laughs> quick and simple. Well, it, you're you're working through them quite quickly, yeah. each section quite quickly. But bylaws are typically 40 pages long. Yeah. And I just love it when people give me their bylaws and they're 15 pages long and they say, do we need to revise these? <laughs> like, uh, Definitely. You know, yeah. I said, you don't need to revise your bylaws. Your bylaws could be one line. That everything in uh, the bylaws must comply with, or must um, not comply. Yeah, it complies with where I'm supposed to, with the Condominium Property Act of Alberta. End of story. But, and you know what, that process, that initial process was so helpful for our board, um, especially yeah. reading it line by line, word by word. Because, you know, once if you read it by yourself, you skim over things. You skim, that's right. But because we were sitting at a table and actually concentrating of, on what it says in the bylaws, it gave us questions, like yes. things to reconsider, yes. right, some changes to make. And then, you know, once we make the changes, then we're going into step three, which is basically we submit whatever we wanted to change to the lawyer, look at the second draft, and what else right. do we do so in what, this, what this I third do step? Is I read them out loud, and one board member will say, "Well, no, that should be. Uh, we need to. We need to think about this." So I'll write, make notes in the margin, and sometimes we'll find spelling errors, sometimes punctuation errors, and I tend to take all the legal jargon out of them. Uh, the best I ever saw in a set of draft bylaws, <clears throat> excuse me, was here and two before. And when I sat down in Hugh Willis's office and I said, where did that come? He says, I don't know. I've never even heard that word before. And I said, wow. So, you know, I get rid of uh, all of this stuff. If it doesn't materially change what the bylaw means, mm -hmm. get rid of it. There's no reason for it. Yeah. And um, so I make the notes. Then I make an appointment with Hugh. I sit down in his, in his office. And he sits at his computer. And he's got the draft set in front of him on the computer. And he makes the changes highlights the changes, and then prints off a copy for me and emails me a copy that becomes the mm -hmm. next step. That becomes the next step. And you know what? I'm, I'm happy that you talked about you know removing certain legalese. Mm -hmm. uh, because at the end, the bylaws have to be understandable by everybody. Exactly. Because if somebody doesn't understand them, you can't expect somebody to follow them. No, exactly. Right, and that's that's a big problem. Um, some people interpret the bylaws differently um, based on their skill, their knowledge. Yeah. So they have to be simple enough. Um, I will. I wouldn't say you know a six-year-old should be able to read them or eight-year-old no, or read them or understand them, but they need to be simple ago, enough. Years ago, one of my colleagues um, came to me and said, "This is when I was still working." 
came to me and said, could you read this, this section in the bylaws? And she said, we've just taken over this, this I've just taken over this one uh, complex, and they have these bylaws. And she said, I was reading through them, and I don't understand what this means, so can you tell me what this means? And I read this, and it was about four or five lines long, this one section. It was one long run-on sentence, and I did not understand it at all. I read it three times, and I have a feeling it was just a compilation of every legal term that could ever be used, because it meant absolutely nothing. And I said, you know what? Call the corporation's lawyer and get them to tell you what that means, because it's totally understandable. Yeah. Un, ununderstandable. Yeah. You couldn't understand it. Yeah. It was ridiculous. And only that, if, if owners don't understand that, and if you can't enforce it, if it goes to court, it also has to be upheld in court of law. So if the judge reads that and he's like, what, what is this? What is it? and It's just, like, yeah, go yeah. home, right, kind yeah. of thing. Okay, so we did, uh, st uh, we had a set of bylaws from the lawyer. We that was step one. Step two is basically we had, you know, we sat down and read it word yeah. for word. Uh, step three, we set, sent in the, uh, the draft to the lawyer. It came back. So now let's say the, the bylaw committee or the condo board, whoever is sitting at, mm -hmm. the, uh, at the revision process, is satisfied uh, with the final copy. Well, it's not final, the current is, version. You're, you're looking at the second right. draft. Second yeah. draft, what's the next step? Okay, we sit down with the second draft and everything that was discussed at the first read through, the big read through, mm -hmm. uh, is highlighted. Okay. So that it's easy to find on the page. Mm -hmm. And we go through it and we discuss those points. So that meeting takes about three hours. That, that's a much, much shorter meeting. And we look through and see what, and then someone will say, oh, well, I, I have a question about something we talked about last time. Okay, fine, and we, mm -hmm. you know, redefine, redefine. And we make more notes, and I take it back to Hugh Willis. He sits in front of his computer, and I say, okay, uh, section 42, they want to add this or take this away, or can they have this, because this has been a, problem in their complex. So we do that and that gives us draft three. Okay. So we got the draft three. It's done. What's the next step? Okay. We sit down and we do the same thing again. Mm -hmm. Draft three. We look at the highlighted pieces and generally by draft three, you're getting pretty close to the end mm -hmm. or should be. I have had some that have gone as far as nine drafts. Wow. Yeah. That's a little long. That's, that's a little long. Um, but generally, you get to the third draft, you're, you're just really getting down, redefining and redefining and redefining. And uh, then that goes back to the lawyer. And those items will be cleaned up, and they may add one or two little things. That brings us to draft four. Okay. So we get draft four, everything's perfect. We What's meet, next? We meet, we have a 20-minute meeting, mm -hmm. and say, okay, these are the things that were were um, cleaned up from the last time. Mm -hmm. It's now done. Everybody's happy? Yes. Okay, fine. Then I get a clean draft from the lawyer, from Hugh Willis, from the lawyer, that doesn't say draft. It's not watermarked with draft. It doesn't say draft bylaws on the bottom. And, uh, oh, one thing I want to point out very, very uh, clearly. When you are, if you are doing bylaws yourself and you're using a condominium lawyer, make sure that you have an index at the front of your bylaws. Um, I'm working with a board right now that their old bylaws do not have an index, and they're trying to find things. And I say, give them to me because I know what they are, because <laughs> I've worked so many sets of bylaws, I know where this stuff is. And I find it quite quickly, and, and that's fine. But if you have an index that's well laid out, um, then you know where to find things in your new bylaws. But when you get to draft four, uh, you've cleaned it all up. It goes back to the lawyer. They take draft off of it. They take draft off the, the, the footer. And you now have a set of bylaws mm -hmm. that are clean and can go to the owners, inviting them to an information session. Okay, that's the next step, the information that's session. The next step. Perfect. That's the next step. So you um, book your space for an information session if you have the kind of complex that has a place for you to have your, where you would normally have your AGM. That's wonderful. But nine times out of ten, that's not the case. And you have to, to book your space. So you book your space. We make sure everybody's um, uh, calendars work. And 
you send the bylaws out to the owners with an invitation to attend the information session three weeks before the event. Now, the reason I say three weeks is that's just what's come down over the years that works the best. You give them four weeks, it's on top of the fridge, they forget about it, they don't come. But you give them three weeks that, oh, please read your bylaws, have your questions ready, come to the information session, the lawyer will be there, um, I will be there, the board will be there, everybody, the condominium manager, if there is one, will be there, everybody to answer questions. And Hugh Willis runs the meeting. Perfect. Because he goes through the bylaws and uh, points out the highlights to the owners that you know they need to be made aware of. Are there any changes? If the owners, and the owners always want changes, and, but this is good, this is where they get their input. Mm -hmm. And uh, these are paying attention, right? Not just letting things paying, that's run right. through. Now, I have had some meetings, some information sessions, where the owners ask questions, but there's no changes. They just want clarification. Mm -hmm. um, it says you can't park on the grass, but does that mean that your moving truck can't park in the grass? Or No, no one can park in the grass at any time. Uh, they just want it clarified, mm -hmm. whatever. So you get the clarifications. Now, if there are some changes made, and everybody, everybody's there in agreement that wants the changes, okay, fine, it's, it's changed. So then I take notes for Hugh while he's running the meeting, and we then go back to his office, and I set up an, another appointment with him, get those, that, that set of bylaws, get the little punch list looked after. Then that goes out, that's sent out to the owners with the voting ballot. Okay. And with the please vote, we need a special resolution. And currently, the, um, as of today's date, the special resolution um, definition is 75% of owners registered in title. So you must, must, must pull title because otherwise, how do you know who your owners are? And if you have uh, parking stalls that are titled, you have to pull those titles as well because you need 75% of the owners registered in title. And also, that has to represent 7,500 of the 10,000 units. And that's Alberta specific. That's Alberta specific. So if you don't have all the unit factors pulled, you don't, you'll never get your 7,500 mm -hmm. unit factors. And you typically need about 82 or 83% of the owners voting. Because believe it or not, some owners vote no, and some owners don't vote. So, um, and if you're in arrears, your vote doesn't count. So you, you need to hit just about everybody. Mm -hmm. So, would you, if somebody doesn't vote, would it be a good idea to go and knock on their door? I have. I haven't knocked on their door, but I phoned them mm -hmm. and said, uh, "You sent me in your ballot and you voted no. Can I ask why you voted no? What section were you not happy with? I don't like the concept of bylaws. Period." <laughs> <laughs> uh, you live in a condominium, you know, but most people, I had, I had one man say to me, well, I, he, he was from a different country, and he said, well, I don't understand what bylaws are all about. So mm -hmm. I explained to them what yeah. bylaws mean and what they're mm -hmm. for and all of that. Oh, yeah, well, I'm in favor of that. And I said, mm -hmm. well, if I send you another ballot, would you vote no? Said, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Got rid of his old ballot. And, well, I kept it, but, you know, I put it into the no section, and he had a, a, a positive uh, response. So his, his vote counted. Perfect. And you know, it's, it's interesting that you actually brought that up because many people, they move into a condo and they don't understand condo living. Yeah. They, don't, they don't understand that there's, you know, it's not a rental. Like you're the owner, you take care of your property and there's right. rules that you have to follow. Yeah. And most people, you know, even when they buy, they don't even look at the bylaws. Like no. to be honest, when I was purchasing our condo, we didn't even consider looking at the bylaws. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, it's our first condo, let's buy. It's like, look at the view, it's beautiful. Yeah. Let's just move in. And like, you know, we weren't educated enough yeah. because we didn't understand what condo living is about and we just yeah. bought into it, right? Mm -hmm. You know, our bias could have stated, you know, only one person per, <laughs> per unit, right? Yeah, exactly. And be like, you know, we'd be, uh, we wouldn't be happy campers, yeah. but that's, you know, that's life and people have to get educated. That's um, right. And I think it's the board's responsibility to educate our owners of what the owner's responsibility is yeah. and what they have to follow and what they have to do. And there is so much more education available to owners now mm -hmm. than there was 20 years ago. Oh, definitely, yeah. Uh, I mean, you, you, can't, you can't pick up the paper that there's not an article on condominium. No. Um, magazine articles, read government stuff. There's, yeah. there's things there. And then go on the internet. Yeah. And there's, I, I had someone uh, talk to me one time about, they kept quoting stuff like it was the act. And I said, what are you quoting me? Oh, well, this is the act in Phoenix. Oh. <laughs> it doesn't apply. Yeah. And um, 
but they were, you know, they were doing research. Mm -hmm. And that's fabulous. Yeah. Some, sometimes a little, a little knowledge can be a dangerous thing, but most times it's... Yeah. And I'm happy you brought up the Phoenix issue because, um, you know, on this show we have viewers and listeners from all over North America. So make sure you're looking at your local, local acts, yes. laws, regulations in that the apply. the that you live in or in the state that you live in, you look at that because they're all different. They're all different, exactly. Just as bylaws, there's not two sets of bylaws that are the same. Exactly. Because everybody faces different problems. Exactly. So your, your act, your condominium property act will be whatever it's called and wherever you live will be called something different, but know that. Yeah, it'll be specific to where to, you live. Yeah, exactly. And that's something people have to consider, right? Because yeah. as you said, like some people quote or they look at and read acts from different provinces of different states, like, well, they can do this, why can't we? Well, well, can't, well different rules, sorry. Different, yeah, exactly. Like, you know, you exactly. live in Canada or the US, you don't live in Spain or you don't live in Italy, so different yeah. rules apply, right? Yeah. Um, so, perfect, so we had the information session um, with our owners, we got votes coming in. The next step is the special resolution. Well, that the voting is the special resolution. Okay, so that is a special resolution. So what you want to do is you want to send out uh, notice to everybody, unless you get every owner attending an, uh, an information session where you could vote typically and get the special resolution passed. Mm -hmm. That almost never happens. Uh, I've only ever have, had it happen once, mm. where the owners all the owners always came to the AGM. It was a small complex. They all came to an AGM. So they all attended the information session and they voted right there and it was a done deal. Wow. Were, I want to live in that uh, condo. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but typically, uh, you attend the information session, then they, get, they send you out a new set of bylaws to actually vote on. And the letter accompanying that will say that, you know, um, we are passing this through a special resolution. That's the only way it can be done. Only the owners can pass bylaws, the board mm -hmm. cannot. And we give them 30, 30 days to send their ballot down. Now, after that 30 days, um, you tabulate everything all up and you find out that only half the people have voted. So that's when the board's work starts. Um, when I was working, I would look after all the off-site owners and the board would look after the on-site owners. Mm -hmm. And I would call and email the people that, that um, owned but uh, didn't live on site. And typically it would be, um, Rafael, uh, we haven't got your ballot back yet. Do you think you could say, oh, well, I, I don't have one. I can't remember where it is. Well, if I email one, can you sign it and scan it and send it right back to me? Oh, yeah, sure, not a problem. Mm -hmm. And that gets done right away. Um, the on-site owners that haven't voted, I always suggest that two board members go together. Mm -hmm. and, and last night I actually was at a meeting and one of the board members said, well, why do we have to have two people? I said, one is for safety, and one of the other board members, and one is for um, making sure that you know you've got somebody to back up what you've said. And I say uh, you go, and when they say, "Oh, well, I don't know where my ballot is," you say, "Well, I just happen to have one." Oh, with me. You know, how convenient, right? How convenient. <laughs> and it, I and, and I, I say to them, it never hurts to take a couple of sets of bylaws with them as well. And they say, "Oh, well, I don't know where my ballot is." Actually, I say, "Well, I said here they are, but could you put it on your website?" Yeah. So, uh, so that generally takes, I mean, you give them 30 days to send the ballot in, but that's not when it's over. Mm -hmm. um, you then start knocking on doors, making phone calls, sending emails, and um, be prepared to answer questions. And <clears throat> it could take another month, yeah. sometimes another two months. Yeah. yeah, It's a process, right? It's a process, it's but a process. it's something that has to be yeah. done, right? It's, it's for the benefit for the entire corporation. Um, so, okay. We get the ballots, everything's good to go. Yep. We're ready to approve the bylaws. What's the next step? Uh, once you have the special resolution, you have the numbers for the special mm -hmm. resolution. You get 82% um, of the owners voting and you're now at 7,600 unit factors. Okay, <coughs> excuse me. What you do is you send an email out to all the board members saying uh, whoever's doing all the tabulation, whether it's a condominium manager or whoever, uh, we've reached what I call the magic numbers. Mm -hmm. um, send an email out. Oh, and you have to look at the arrears as well. That okay. the day that you get those magic numbers to make sure that all the people that have voted are eligible to vote. They're not in arrears. So you send an email out to the board saying that the special resolution has passed. That there's, they are approving that the special resolution has passed. So Because the next day it could change. You could get a new owner in or whatever. But as of that day, you had what you needed. 
So then uh, a form is signed by the board uh, with two signatures, and it's put under corporate seal. Every corporation has its own seal. Mm -hmm. And that, with the bylaws, the lawyer will send it in to land titles and register your bylaws. When you get back, the um, there's four pages you'll get back from land titles. Um, there'll be the barcode page, a copy of the Form 3 that's with the board signatures on it, um, the registration number, and there's another one that I can't remember what it is. But that comes back, and you send those pages out to your owners as well and say, there, now your bylaws are passed. Please put these with your bylaws to prove that they've passed, mm -hmm. and you are now being governed by a new set of bylaws. Right. And that's pretty much the process. That's it. That's it. That's it, right? Easy peasy. Easy peasy. Only takes about a year. Only takes about a year. But you know, with the right guidance, it might take a year, but actually it'll be a way, well, it way take, smoother and way simpler, right? It will take a right? lot longer because I make sure that I get in to see Hugh Willis and get mm -hmm. this done. And uh, I mean, he's got lots of bylaws that boards are just doing on their own. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> he'll say to me, he said, he'll say to me, would you take these, these people on? I said, of course, you know, whatever. And, um, uh, but lawyers don't provide the education. I will give you the process and I will give you the education. And it's the education part that's so vital, mm -hmm. so vital to get yeah. effective bylaws. Yeah. Because I've, I've seen just about all of them. Yeah. I mean, it's good to have a pro on your side, at, on your, at the well, table. Well, every, every board that I've worked with, um, I mean, I had one board that they'd been trying for three years to do their bylaws. And uh, they attended one of the CCI sessions, and we were talking about bylaws. And it was just part of the course. It wasn't the course on bylaws. And um, they approached me afterwards, and they said, would you, you know, if I call you, would you come and talk to us? I said, certainly. So I went and talked to them, and they had... Um, been trying for three years to finish their bylaws, and they were a self-managed board, and they they couldn't they, they didn't know which way to go. Yeah. And um, I go on to spin to onto the Alberta Registers uh, website or um, yeah website, and um, I'm looking up what's been registered for their corporation, mm -hmm. and there's been no bylaws, but they've made two bylaw changes. And so when I went into Hugh Willis's office, I said, uh, "Did you?" happened to bring these people up yet? And he says, yeah, he said, they don't have bylaws. I said, that's what I thought. And so he gave me, he had printed off the pages that showed the registration and that they had no bylaws mm -hmm. registered. So when I sat down with him the first time, I said, um, does anybody have a set of their old bylaws? So, yeah, one of, them, and one of the board members happened. And I said, uh, well, I hate to tell you that. I said, where did you get the bylaws? Oh, well, the developer gave them. This was 1993. And I said, um, the developer gave them to me, yeah. I said, you've made two amendments to them, yeah. And I said, well, the amendments were properly registered and the whole nine yards. I said, however, you have no bylaws. You are being governed by the statutory bylaws, which is the appendix at the end of the Condominium Property Act. It is not the Condominium Property Act, but it's they're there for convenience sake. And they were just like, I said, your, your developer never registered the bylaws. He gave them to you, but he never registered them. So you've been operating all these years with statutory bylaws. Yeah. What do we do? And I said, don't fine anybody, and we will have new ones before, you know. And we got, got it done and whatever. And, but. That's why you have to seek professional help, right? People that deal with this on a regular basis, and they know what the process I is. Have, I have had uh, boards think that the appendix bylaws can be used in conjunction with their own bylaws, and they can. And I'm telling this to, um, I had someone saying, they were, they were sitting at the far end of the table, but they had open in front of them, which I could recognize as being the appendix bylaws. And they were quoting stuff, and I said, um, what are you quoting from? Well, uh, and I said, the appendix bylaws. And I pulled out my copy of the uh, Community Property Act. And they said, yes. And I said, well, they don't apply to you. You have bylaws. And the president says, well, I always thought that, that, that we could use this. I said, no, that's not the act. It's, it's just an addition to the act. It's not mm -hmm. part of the act. Oh, the condominium manager is sitting there and says, oh, I've been using those too. I thought that that was, you know. Yeah, that's, so, you know, one of those things in our industry, right? Yeah, uh, just, you know, there's so many, 
little tiny things. And fortunately, when I started this, and I worked with Don Kramer, who was the first, who wrote the first condominium bylaws in Canada. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was the corporate uh, legal counsel for, or the legal counsel for most of the corporations that I managed. And I just learned so much from him. He phones me one day and he said, you haven't registered the board of directors for such and such condominium. And I said, um, well, no, they didn't, their, their board of directors didn't change. It's the same people. He said, show me in the act where it says, uh, you only have to register them if there's a change. Now, the form says change of directors, but that's wrong because the act says you have to register the board of directors after an AGM. Not if there's been a change, but the board of directors. No. And I went, oh, okay. So I ripped up the form <laughs> and got the board to sign it and send it in, and no. away we went. No. So there's all these little tiny nitpicky details that you have to pay attention to. Yeah. No. No. And most boards don't know those details, right? Because exactly. they've never worked, they've never managed uh, condos. You know, they're, they could be anybody, right? Exactly. They're, they think they're volunteers, and, but and it unless, is a business, unless, it is a corporation. Unless you have sat on boards before and know how a board operates, this is where you can run into all kinds, mm-hmm. of, all kinds of problems. And, uh, you know, like I've had board members say, oh, well, I'm going to give so-and-so my proxy to come to a board meeting. I go, no, you can't do that. Yeah. That's not how it works. Uh, we're governed by, governed by parliamentary procedure and MLAs, MPs, doesn't matter, uh, council people in, at the municipal level, they can't have somebody vote for them. They mm. have to vote. Yeah, no, exactly. So if you've just had brain surgery, you have to show up to vote. <laughs> True that. And one, uh, I had this uh, board member ask me this question actually a couple of weeks ago. Um, Asking if they have a new set of bylaws, mm-hmm. we know the answer, but do they replace the old bylaws? Oh, very definitely. Exactly. Because the what it says at the top of the form, it'll say um, the word, and you have to choose the wording you want. Uh, it will say that the attached, the, the either you're changing the bylaw and you just put it into the onto the form, or it's a whole new set in which you attach it to the form. Uh, it's repealing, replacing, amending adding to whatever you're doing. Now, if you have a new set of bylaws, you are repealing and replacing. Mm-hmm. So you're repealing the old ones and you're replacing it with this. Right. One time, I had a pet bylaw change. All they were doing was adding a weight restriction and they repealed and replaced. Oh, I see where this is going. <laughs> and I would never have suggested to this corporation that they change, do their bylaws, because it, it can be an expensive, you know, depending, relatively expensive. And... Um, I went to this board meeting, and one board member said, I read the bylaws carefully over the weekend. We have 12 things to change. Can we change the 12 things? And I said, no. I said, but you're the board. You can do whatever you like, but this is why I'm saying no. And um, so they decided that they were going to change their bylaws. So I went, when I went back to the office the next day, I asked uh, the woman in our office that would pull stuff in my plan. I said, would you please pull me the, the bylaws for this corporation? And... So she did, she, and half an hour later she comes into my office, she's got four pages. And I went, no, 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 I need the bylaws. She said, these are the bylaws. And right there. And it jumped off the page at me, it was repeal and replace, and I went, oh my God. Because land titles does not question what you send them. They don't say, are you sure you want to say this? They do what you send them. Yeah. So they repealed and replaced. And I had 14 heart attacks because I had done three single bylaw changes uh, for three different corporations. And uh, so I quickly got them out, and it was two um, added twos, uh, two, two of the, the uh, bylaws that we did were added to their bylaws, and one was um, amended. We changed the wording. And, um, but there was the right language, and I went, oh, okay, thank God. Uh, but you have to be very careful. Yeah. But it says right there. So yes, your bylaws are repealed, and the new one replaces yeah. them. And that's something the board also needs to educate the owners on, right? Yes. So you don't have an owner coming back to you with old set of bylaws and go basically saying, "Well, this is what this, this bylaw what says." says. That's well, right. that's no longer no effective, longer effective. effective right. you know. And it's really a good idea that if you do newsletters or you send it out on the website with updates and this kind of thing. Uh, take a couple of bylaws or take mm-hmm. one bylaw every month and just 
highlight mm. it and, and discuss it. Uh, you know, this is what the pet bylaw says, and this is what we're enforcing, and this is what our policy is, uh, and explain it all. Um, parking, uh, emergency parking access. I mean, all the different things that are sort of hot spots in, the, in, in your complex, in your community. That was actually a fantastic idea. Right? Well, I used to do it with a couple of my complexes, and one of them was fairly large, and um, they would have, you know, people moving in and out every year like you do. And they said, how do people know about this? I said, well, uh, they get the bylaws, but we can certainly do this. And, and I would, you know, do it with a little picture and mm -hmm. feeding. Yeah. You know, there's always somebody playing Indy 500 down the road. And there's kids on the road, you know. Yeah, that's why every bylaws are different, as you mentioned, right? That's everybody right. Because everybody has a different set of circumstances. Exactly. So don't take somebody else's bylaws, even though it might be similar building a couple blocks down. That's right. And just copy paste. Don't do that. It you work. have to go through the process, unfortunately, right? Yeah. The bylaws have to be specific and to I, your corporation. I had one board that I met with uh, about a year ago that they just wanted to be given a draft set and they'd sign off on it. I said, no, 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 that's not the way it works. No. Because then it's, we're telling you what how mm -hmm. you're going to operate and that's not the way it works. Yeah. You have to make those decisions. Yeah. It's like having your personal will and just taking a template of, you know, yeah. downloading someone yeah. from the website and it's like just signing off. No, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. That doesn't work that way. Well, Helena, I think I don't have any more questions for you. Okay. Um, is there anything else you ha you'd like to add? I, I, can, I think that we've covered it all. Uh, the process. Uh, I, can, I can't tell you about the education part because it mm -hmm. would, you know, I mean, every complex, every board is different with different questions. So I can't really uh, speak to that mm -hmm. too easily. But uh, we've covered, I think, covered a good... Uh, good I question. think we did cover quite a bit. I yeah. think you provide a lot of information, something every board should consider before yeah. revising their bylaws. Um, so we went through your, your seven-step process. Um, we're going to include that below the video on the okay. website uh, so people can you know download it as, with your contact information okay. as well. Sure. So if you have questions, uh, please contact Helena. She'll be able to explain yeah. the process in a little be bit more detail. Yeah. Uh, she's fantastic. We're working with... with Helena right now and I have nothing but good good things to say about Helena her process I have to pay him $25 to say that oh is it only 25 <laughs> oh so we should have we should have uh, set a higher number uh, before the interview but uh, ladies and gentlemen if you're looking to revise your bylaws um, contact Helena go over this interview again take out a piece of paper pen start writing down notes take it to your board or even send this video uh, to your entire board so you can actually get familiar with what the actual process entails, what actually needs to be done. And I, I um, will not just go ahead and say, yes, I'll do this mm -hmm. until I've met with the board to explain the whole process. Because if you don't, and if, if everyone doesn't hear it, uh, it doesn't work. So um, there's no charge for that meeting. It takes half an hour. And I explain the process and what I do and what mm -hmm. Hugh does and the whole nine yards yeah. and what you can choose. Yeah. make up your mind as to whether or not you want to. And it's okay. something you don't want to rush through either, right? Do you want, like, you want your bylaws to be, you know, in effect and effective for years to come. You don't want to be revising them every year or every couple no. of years. Exactly. So, you know, there's things you have to consider. That's why it's good to, you know, hire a professional, hire a condominium lawyer, not a real estate lawyer or a family lawyer. Mm -hmm. Hire a professional that's in the industry that knows what's happening, what's going to be happening in the future, what changes are coming, so then they can incorporate that into your bylaws. Exactly. And at the end, you're going to save not only time and money, but you're also going to have bylaws that you can enforce. And um, which is the key. Which and is the key. And if you've got well-written bylaws that will be easily enforceable, you probably won't have to enforce them. Exactly. Because the people will be able to understand them. They'll know exactly where they stand. And there's no problem. Exactly, right? It'll make your job easier. Exactly. Right? Shorter oh, meetings. It, yeah. No arguments. You know, yeah. if at times an owner disagrees with bylaws and they want to come to the board meeting and you know share their case or try to convince the board to do otherwise but you know what if you have a set of bylaws it'll make your job way easier yeah right if you have the right set of bylaws because it's a, you basically sh can t show the owner right white on black and white it's like this is what the bylaws state this is why we enforce them right. it makes everybody's job easier so helena if you have nothing else to add nope. uh, we're going to finish this interview as mentioned below um as mentioned before there's going to be uh, a link if you're watching on youtube there's going to be a link in the description to download uh, Helena's checklist and her contact information. If you're on the website, just fill out the, uh, the, uh, the form uh, below this video and we'll send that information to you right away. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. 
I hope uh, you learned quite a bit about revising your bylaws and the steps to take because it is a very important uh, topic. It's the most important document in your conduct corporation. Uh, if you have any questions, contact Helena. Give me a shout. Give her a shout. Thank you for watching. Have yourself a great day, and I'll see you on the next episode of the Condo Web Show. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you for watching this episode of the Condo Web Show. Our goal is to share this information with as many condo boards, owners, and managers as possible. We would be forever grateful if you could share this episode with your friends and colleagues by simply clicking one or all of the social share buttons on this episode page. Even better, if you know someone that would benefit from this information, please send them a link to this episode. If you have any questions or any ideas for an episode, please submit it by clicking on the Submit an Episode link on the main menu. We will do our best to get an industry professional on the show to answer your questions. And lastly, don't forget to subscribe to the show on our website by submitting your name and email, or if you're watching on YouTube, by clicking the subscribe button. This way, you'll be reminded of upcoming episodes, and if you miss an episode, we will be happy to send you the recordings.